Hello everyone, it is me, Pizza Man. I am back. What the hell? It's been so long. Well, here's the thing. About two weeks ago, I went and decided to get married. That happened. If you've been following me a while, you know, been looking forward to this. Been looking forward to that day for a long time, you know? October 12th, baby. So, married my best friend and the love of my life. A couple weeks ago, we went on a dream of a European honeymoon. Uh, let me pick a quest first. Let's pick a random quest. That's a copper, why not? So yeah, um, wedding was sensational. Sensational. Far beyond what <laughs> I expected. It was pretty much the best night of our lives. I was, you know, a little nervous leading up to it as one typically is before they get married. Not nervous about, you know, being married. Um, but more nervous about, you know, inviting a hundred of our closest family and friends and just kind of having to work the room and be the center of attention and make sure everyone's happy. But, you know, the day of, I was kind of surprised. All of that just kind of melted away and I was just able to have an amazing time with my wife and celebrate together and just make absolute doofus fools out of ourselves on the dance floor which was which was so fun um and this whole past couple weeks has been such a whirlwind like my wife and i keep talking about it it's just like it's like it feels like it didn't even happen it was all such a blur it feels like a distant memory or a dream and we look down at our fingers with our rings and we go oh shit that actually happened did I eat? I ate. Let me make sure I got everything I need here. Cool drinks, hot drinks, got all that. Um, where are we going? So, I'm going anywhere hot? No. I'm going to the frontier. So I don't need these cool and hot drinks. I'm to I'm way overthinking this right now. I'm in low rank. Anyway, we spent the last couple weeks in Europe. It's my wife's first time in Europe. We've been looking forward to this trip for a long time. We bounced around between Paris, Amsterdam, Florence, and finishing off in London. And we pulled out all the stops. We went business class, freaking five-star hotels, um, just racking up an obscene amount of credit card debt. But you know what? YOLO. Just kidding. <laughs> we didn't rack up any credit card debt. My my parents are loaded, okay? And they helped us out quite a bit. So we're very, very fortunate there. We had an absolute dream of a honeymoon. Mainly, you know, we didn't, we didn't really try to hit most of the touristy stuff. I know a lot of people when they travel, you know, you gotta have the checklist. You're hitting the ground running at 8 a.m., walking 12 hours a day, trying to see everything. That's not really how we approached it. We wanted to kind of just relax, enjoy our honeymoon, and spend our time there like we live there, you know? At the end of the day, what we love doing, my wife and I, we like to just chill out. Find some good spots to eat and drink. You know, dress up a little nice for each other. So that's mainly what we did. You know, we'd wander around. We'd, you know, we'd take some walks. Especially during the day, find some cafes. You know, in Paris, you can throw a rock and hit a cafe uh, anywhere you look. So we did that, hit some people watching. Ate our body weight in steak frites over the course of... You know, the few days we were in Paris. We hit the Louvre, as one does. You gotta see the Mona Lisa. We had a dinner cruise on the Seine, which was beautiful. You can get really nice views of the, uh, the Eiffel Tower and all the other sites along the Seine. So, you know, we, we, we planned a couple events. A couple, you know, highlight type of stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, as we hit Florence, Amsterdam, and 
London. It's kind of the same deal. We kind of walk past the touristy stuff to just, you know, say we did that stuff. Like, we walked by the Big Ben, sort of. We stayed in that area. We, um... Uh, not too many, like, landmarky type sites in Amsterdam, per se, but the canals are beautiful. Um, I don't know. It was just a really, really amazing time. Amsterdam was a s real sleeper favorite of ours. It was kind of a wild card of, like, okay, we really wanted to hit Paris and London and Italy. What's, like, one other kind of random place we want to go to? And I picked Amsterdam, and... <laughs> Lo and behold, I, I think it was our favorite place that we hit the entire trip. The hotel, the uh, hotel we stayed in, was absolutely fabulous. Uh, definitely our favorite hotel of the trip. The uh, Pulitzer Amsterdam, just beautiful hotel in the canals there. And Amsterdam is just so beautiful, and it's you know relatively small. You can walk around and cover a lot of ground there and really really amazing food as well um my favorite spot there was called uh cannibal royale which was like a basically a meat lovers paradise there i had a rack of ribs there my wife got a steak it was pretty much the best rack of ribs I ever had in my life. I was blown away. So... Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it for the honeymoon. Lots of, lots of eating and drinking. Florence... We, you know, we weren't, we weren't huge fans of Florence, TBH. Um... My wife and I, who got there, were... <laughs> We were so excited to, you know, go to Italy, get their food, and the restaurants we hit there were amazing, but just the city itself, walking around it, we didn't really enjoy it. I mean, I told my wife it feels like an amusement park there. It's, it just, I don't know, maybe we hit the wrong areas, but it just, that whole city just seems entirely catered to tourists now. It doesn't even feel like um, there's any kind of local culture there whereas like in London Paris Amsterdam you I don't know it just feels like there's more of a local culture there but yeah anyway enough of, enough about cheesy marriage honeymoon stuff let's talk about what we're really here for and that is monster hunter now you're wondering from the title of this video bro what are you doing playing 30 hours of monster hunter on your honeymoon you are the world's worst husband. Now, let me break it down for you, okay? First of all, a lot of travel. Planes, trains, and automobiles, right? Seven hour flight across the pond from uh, the East Coast US where we are to, you know, get to, get to Paris where we touch down. Flight back. Oh, I have a hunter art. I should probably use that. I should probably use Pierce 2 as well. I'm so sidetracked by me yapping, I... I'm giving you, like, the worst gameplay right now. Here we go. Now we're on track. Anyway, yeah. 30 hours of... 30 hours of... Monster Hunter on your honeymoon? What are you doing, bro? But yeah, lots of travel. Took some trains. Lots of planes. And, uh... Lots of time spent... <laughs> you know, waiting for my wife to get ready, okay? She... She's a lovely lady. She... She puts a lot of work. She puts a lot of work into, uh... Looking nice. Not that she needs to, but you know, she likes to put on a nice put on a nice nice little foxy outfit, put on her heels and get her hair and her makeup done and all that. Which leaves a lot of time for me while I'm waiting in the hotel room to play Monster Hunter. So that's what I did. Yeah. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Oh, I, d I didn't I did not even paint the Tetsukabra. Who knows what area he ended up in. Let me let me paint him. Let me get some uh, well done steak as well. I prefer my steak medium rare, but you know, do you. But uh, yeah, MHGU. This is an entry in the series of Monster Hunter that I actually haven't gotten around to. And I love bringing my Switch. 
when I travel. Uh, it's it's amazing. You can bring it, play it anywhere. And you can bring your dock with you and just dock it up to, you know, any hotel. Pretty much any decent hotel will have a TV in it with an HDMI port. And you can just dock it right up. It's pretty sweet. So, my game of choice while on the honeymoon, our two-week honeymoon, was MHGU. This game, well, this whole series can keep you busy for a while. Uh, I've, I've played uh, a lot of Monster Hunter on the DS, and uh, my actually my first game in the series that I ever played was 3 Ultimate on the, the Wii U. Wow, blast from the past there. Great times with the Wii U. But yeah, I never got around to GU. And classic Monster Hunter, you know, it's just like a warm hug. Classic Monster Hunter is always there for you when you feel like modern gaming sucks and you're tired of all the multiplayer microtransaction sweaty BS and all that and you just want to do some solo monster hunting. It's just always a great time. And I you know, I I haven't I haven't really been trying to fly through it per se. I'm still in low rank and almost kind of taking a more completionist approach, except not really. I'm, you know, just trying to s stop and smell the roses a little bit with this one. Oh, I love this when you get, <laughs> get thrown out of the, thrown out of the area by the monster. Low key annoying, but also very amusing. Yeah, just really taking my time with this game, doing all the little quests, not just trying to breeze through the key quests and move up in the ranks. I mean, I'm just you know making all the different weapon types, playing all the different weapons, trying out all the different hunting styles. Been really getting into Valor style, that's that's pretty cool. And Adept style, which I'm using on uh, this heavy bowgun here, which actually works out pretty well, because, you know, with this heavy bowgun, your mobility's not great. And basically your best bet is dodging around like this. But if you can time up those dodges, get that Adept Evade going, okay, you're pretty mobile with it. So I really like that. Also, this gunpowder infusion thing, so cool, so cool. I'm playing as I'm playing as my wife, by the way. Um, my wife named Carly. Oops, name reveal. Um, I've always, you know, I envision her as many things, but one thing I've always envisioned her holding a big ass bowgun, and you know, I can make my dream a reality in Monster Hunter. How cool is that? Yeah, played a fair amount of this game on our honeymoon, and I don't know, you, you forget how how well the Switch can travel sometimes. I don't get out much, okay, but uh, when I go out on a big trip, I'm bringing this, best believe I'm bringing the Switch with me. Oh, reload. Get that crouching fire going. Aw. Oh. That was terrible. I think he's hurt now. Yep, he's hurt. All right, let's uh, let's, let's finish this big angry toad, this big angry frog, and call it a video here. But yeah, anyway, we're we're home safe now in our hometown of Boston, and I'm still playing this game. Oh my my big ass 65 inch flat screen at home, and I'm just like wow. The immersion level is like tenfold when you... <laughs> when I've been playing this game pretty much this whole time on the tiny little Switch screen and on the tiny little hotel TVs, playing it on a big screen is... just elevates the whole experience. It just makes it so cinematic, so... I'm just gonna keep playing this game and keep recording it. Maybe... maybe get to high rank and G rank if I don't get bored. But yeah. Real excited for Monster Hunter Wilds. I I honestly never really got into Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter World that whole style, but I'm I'm very happy to uh, give Wilds a shot.
That's mainly what inspired me to download MHGU, just, you know. What else am I gonna do while waiting for Monster Hunter Wilds to come out in February? But you know, that's what's so great about this series. There's so many great entries in this series that you can play. And you know what they say, the best Monster Hunter game is the one you like the most. For me, I would say, what's my, what's my favorite? I would say 4 Ultimate. That game was a banger. I played... <laughs> that's that's the game I played the most of. Playing that online, even on the 3DS, was was so good. And I, I miss being able to play online Monster Hunter on the DS. I, I hopped on online MHGU here last night, actually, to see if there's any type of player base in... You know, it looks like people are still playing this game online, which is awesome. Even like newer players, like myself, even though not, I'm not necessarily- Ooh. Close them legs there, Froggy. You are looking indecent. Yeah, there's still a lot of- there's still, you know, some people playing this game. Anyway, I'll stop yapping here. I'm gonna emote on this frog real quick. Let's hit him with a- let's hit him with a prance. Hit him with a prance. Well. Anyway, it's great checking in with you guys again. Sorry I've been gone for a while. But you know, life be like that sometimes. You know what? What am I apologizing for? I have no reason to be apologizing. Anyway, if you want more Monster Hunter, let me know. I'm This, this is about to be a, a Monster Hunter channel. I'm about to pivot my entire channel content here. This is... This is the turning point here. I'm officially a Monster Hunter content creator. Or not, we shall see. Let me know.